with Charlie Organier. How's it going, Charlie? Oh, man, swell, man. I'm here in the UK and I'm having a wonderful time. Um, meet, met up with some great people, Neville and Christine. And I'm here with the Sultan. Sultan, a great friend, man. Yeah, we're having a good time here in the UK, my brother. So your harmonica was recorded on thousands of early ska sessions at Studio One and Treasure Island Records. How did you first get into music? <laughs> I started out when I was about five years old. My neighbor, his name is Randolph, he played the harmonica and the guitar, and that's where I started, because I fell in love with the sound of the harmonica that he played, also the guitar. I still don't play the guitar yet, but... Um, the harmonica, I started right there and just, from ever since, just continue. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the key, isn't it? Learning when you're young? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a good, good, good thing to do, yeah. So you've performed with reggae legends such as Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, Derek Morgan, Millie Smalls. It's quite a big list. Um, what can I you played with all of them. I played because I was one of the main studio musicians back then, you know, you had from Big and all these big folks. So I was I was one that he called for every session because the harmonica was unique in the ska music back then, yes. So you had a niche really, because it was very very unique. Yes, a unique sound because it's the if you listen to the harmonica skying, you know, in the in all these music it's it has a unique sound, yes. Yeah, definitely. So, with being a session musician, is that very, I mean, is it very spontaneous, very last minute, or do you get a lot of time to practice before you, before you, before you perform? <laughs> no, 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 no practice time. Practice when you're doing it professionally. Practice while you're playing in the studio. Everything comes natural, you know? You see, I tell you what it is, um... This thing is a part, once you, once you learn that instrument, it's, it just comes natural for all of us that were in that studio. Somebody asked me once if the solos, I play that rough and, just rough and tough solo, and the person asked me, Did you, was that solo written for you? I told them no, because everything was just right, just right at the last minute. But I guess sometimes that's when the best music happens, isn't it? When it's more in the moment and not so planned. Right, when it comes in the moment, yes. And so there are times when you cannot repeat it, you see. You play something, um, even even if during a live performance, um, you play something and if it's recorded and you try to even do, re, do retake, it's hard. It never sounds the same as the first time. No, it never sounds the same, no, no. Because see, music is a spiritual thing, you know. It is spiritual, so there are times when the energy, with that, as you have a certain energy when you're doing certain things, performing it. And for you to repeat it is not easy, yeah. It kind of reminds me of jazz musicians, you know, where they have to... It's the same, it is the same, it is the same. Music is... Whether well, it's jazz, it's blues, it's reggae, it is the same. Great, so how much are you looking forward to the weekend? I mean, is how long since you performed in England? I came here with, I was hanging out with Winston and um, Al Capone, you know, Dennis Al Capone, and we went to South London. I did a, a, a slight thing there, you know, with Rico. And um, then I played in the Netherlands with... Um, what those guys name again? Um, in the Netherlands, um, Rudy Rich on the high notes. Yes, I did that there. Then after that, I did a tour in Germany. I did uh, Germany, um, Czech Republic, and uh, Belgium. Yeah, and that was about a few, just a few years ago. That was also great. Yes. Yeah, ska and reggae is still popular all over the world, isn't it? It is. You know, I tell you something. Jamaica have a, there's a certain energy when it comes to Jamaica. When you're in Jamaica, you feel, number one, you're not in a hurry to go in. <laughs> there are certain energies that is there, you know, and 
so the music is the same, you know? Yeah, the music complements the country very well. Yeah, it, it, you're right, it, it does, yes, yes. So you've worked um, for some of the biggest record labels in Jamaica, as well as Studio One, Treasure Island. I worked for all of them, yeah. Well, I can you tell us about that time? Uh, it, that, uh, that time was great, because, you know, we like, you know, the peace in Jamaica. Everybody just take it easy. That's like Upton Lewis says, take it easy. Everybody, that case that you, that people run. And then in the studio, it was one set of musicians, pretty much. And you, you know, you have Roland Alphonse, you have Tom McCook, you have Val Bennett, you have all these great horn players, Lester Sterling, you know, Dizzy Johnny, Raymond Harper, Frank Anderson, and you, you know, Richard Ace, Theophilus Bedford, then came um, Jack Me Too, and, and um, it was nice, man. It was a great time back then, yeah. When, when he was recording, was it very, you had to get it done after so many takes, or did, was it done when it was perfect? Well, maybe to the most three takes. The most three takes, and it's very rare because... Most of it, you run a song down one time, and the second time, if you listen to um, a lot of those old records, you can hear somebody, the, the engineer saying, red light. Once that red light is on, it's recording time. And everything is was done live, live, and it's on the little half-inch tape, you see? One track, or two tracks was those tapes, was it? Two tracks. And everything goes down at the same time. And yeah. sometimes I listen to that music and I'm saying, wow, today we're using 24 tracks and and overdub and I feel like that wasn't, that was, it wasn't, that, it was like that. Then. It's very different now, yeah. isn't it? Because now if there's one part of the song you can't quite get right, you can go back and just do that individual part. But whereas when you recorded that then, it had to be perfect, didn't it? All the way through. Everything, and uh, sometimes I listen to these records and I said, wow. You know, I left the recording scene for a while and work in the North Coast, work at the Playboy Hotel and all these hotels on the North Coast. And sometimes working with those musicians, and I am thinking, why are they taking so long to learn certain things? While in the studio, it was like over, I mean, a couple of minutes and everything was in everybody's memory. Because the guy would sing the song and I would remember the entire progression of that song, even though I just hear it for the first time. <laughs> I would be playing and I memorize the progression. <laughs> it's interesting though, but I guess it's, it is what it is, you know? And yeah. do, you, do you think it's also because you're being asked to do it straight away, you know, and it's like, you've got to be ready for it, haven't you? Is, I didn't hear you. Oh, I was just saying, do you think, when he was recording back then, that it's also because, you know, it's showtime, it's like, you've got to perform now, when the red light's on. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's just like on the stage, because I do a lot of performances, you know, I'm all over the place performing live, and like a buddy of mine said, he said, you know, Charles, you're two different persons. Because if you're off stage, somebody wouldn't even have the slightest idea that you can perform the way you do. But once you go on the stage, there's a difference, a big difference. And for real, it's showtime. When it's showtime, then it's showtime. And then you do your show. And you work your magic right there, you know? So that's how it is, my brother. Yes. Well, it's been lovely to talk to you, Charlie, and we're looking forward to Skarmouth and your performance with Swords and Alley. All the best of luck. Yes, man, he's going to, he's going to, I tell you something, man, I was at that rehearsal with him yesterday, and I'm telling you, it's going to be dynamite. Brilliant. We yeah. look forward to it. Thanks for joining us on the show, Charlie. Yes, and take care of yourself, my brother.